Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel. As preppers, we tend to accumulate a lot of different types of gear, but most of it can be used for other things besides just emergency or disaster situations. Knives, boots, those can be used for hunting, and then like LED lanterns, besides just power outages, of course you can use those for camping and stuff like that. But there are some prepper and survival related items that we hope we never ever have to use. These are things that are kind of specialty items, but if you need them, there are very few acceptable substitutes. The first piece of survival gear that you hope you never have to use is body armor, and that's available in many types, configurations, protection levels, but what most people probably think of when they hear that is going to be plate carriers with big, thick level 4 plates in them that can stop even some armor-piercing rifle rounds. But those are big, they're bulky, they're very hard to conceal, so chances are they're going to be spending a lot of time in your closet as you're just going around town going to work. But there are some other kinds of body armor out there that are a little bit more practical and that you could use more on a daily basis. And Premier Body Armor sent us a few things to take a look at today, so I'd like to thank them for sending us those and for sponsoring this video. One very good way to utilize body armor is to have a backpack with a ballistic panel. That sort of configuration, it's very good for an EDC bag, but also if you or a loved one is a student, because there is a lot that goes on in the world today. I was a teacher for a while, and I wish that I had something like this. It would have given a lot of peace of mind. And for that application, I think something like the Vertex Ready Pack is a very good option because it blends in very well. This doesn't look any different than a lot of other back packs that people would have out in the wild. So that's going to make it very good if you're going for the gray man look. You don't want to draw a whole lot of attention to yourself. If you work in certain environments or you're a student, you probably don't want to be known as that guy. And having kind of a nondescript bag like this is going to help you with that. The ballistic panel is a level 3A, so that's going to stop handgun rounds like 9mm, 40, all the way up to a 44 Magnum. And it's also been special threat tested for 12 gauge slug, 12 gauge buckshot, and 5.7. And most violent crimes involving firearms are committed with handguns, so this is going to be able to protect you from the threats that you were statistically most likely to face. And Premier sells bundles like this one where you can get a backpack and a specially fitted panel all at the same time, or you can just order the panels separately if you already have a bag that you like or you're trying to save a little bit of money. They do have panels for several specific backpack models from the most common manufacturers or if you have something a little bit different you can order kind of just a general size panel. I'm going to be using this as my new EDC and get home bag and I'll be showing that off in a future video. If you're somebody who works in a more professional environment where a backpack may seem a little bit out of place then you can pick up a laptop case like this one and somebody like my wife would be a good example of that. She does behavior consulting in schools and she doesn't have a backpack. She uses a nice shoulder bag because she's a professional lady and that's what she chose to haul her stuff around in. She can just slip this in her bag. Nobody's ever going to know the difference because it looks just like a regular laptop sleeve like we've used for many, many years. And it will hold up to a 16 inch MacBook Pro, which is a large laptop. And if you have something smaller like a Surface Pro, which won't take up the entire space, the ballistic panels do provide provide a little bit of structure so it's not going to be flopping around everywhere and be kind of suspicious like why do you have that huge laptop case for that tiny little computer but as far as protection that it offers it has two level 3a panels one's on this side one on that side so you have the same level of protection with this as you did with the backpack but if you want protection that you can keep on your body then their everyday armor t-shirt is a good choice I've actually been wearing it the entire time that I've been doing this video, and it has a level 3A insert in the front inside of a little pocket here, and a level 3A insert in the back, so you're protected from both sides. And I think something like this would be a very good choice for people like truck drivers who have to go to some not so nice areas to make deliveries. This could give a little bit extra peace of mind. And then also maybe you're somebody who lives in a city where they're not really doing a good job protecting their citizens and they make it very difficult for them to protect themselves. Something like this could be very useful in that sort of situation. And then just me personally, I help out on my church's security team and having something like this, I mean, 
could come in handy. And the shirt itself, it's pretty comfortable. It's made of a nice, I think it's a moisture wicking fabric. Now, if you're interested in picking this up or any of the other things I've shown, then you can get 10% off from Premier Body Armor's website using the link in the description below or the code DIY at checkout. The next piece of survival gear that you hope you never have to use is a tourniquet. And you can put other things in this category as well, things like quick clot, because if you have to use any of this stuff, then you or somebody else is in a very bad situation experiencing some pretty heavy bleeding. And a tourniquet specifically is designed to stop heavy bleeding from your extremities, like your arms and your legs, because there are some pretty substantial arteries that run through those, like the femoral artery in your leg. If that gets hit, you're going to lose blood very quickly. The tourniquet that I have is a ratcheting tourniquet. It can be applied with one hand, and it's also very easy to use, which is important because if you're injured or just stressed out because you're helping somebody else, then your fine motor skills are going to be completely in the toilet. And you can also practice with this one, which is something that you can't do with some other tourniquets on the market. And this is something good to keep in something like a backpack or particularly a range bag. When I was a teacher, this was actually something that I carried in my backpack with me on a daily basis, just in case something happened. The next piece of survival gear that you hope you never have to use is a gas mask. And it's best to get one that's CBRN rated because that's going to protect you from chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear contaminants. And I have a couple options here. First one is the CM7M and this is the CM6M. Both are offered by Mira Safety. These are uh, masks that I got a while back for doing some videos for them. Um, they're not sponsoring this video, it's just stuff that I've gotten from them in the past. But the good thing about the 7M is that since it has two eyepieces, it's a little easier to shoulder a long gun with. But the CM6M, it offers a much wider field of view. And this is the one that I prefer because of that wider, wider field of view, but also it doesn't fog up like ever. This one, the 7M, if, it'll fog up a little bit occasionally, but this other one, I've never experienced that. But if you get a gas mask, you have to be sure to get good filters for it also. If you have a CBRN gas mask, you want to be sure to get CBRN filters because you can have the best mask in the world, but if you don't have good filters or the filters that you have are not rated for the threats that you are going to be facing, then it's not going to do you any good at all. And then there's some less quote unquote extreme options like N95s. They can help reduce the amount of like dust or smoke particulates that you breathe in if you're in an area with that sort of badness going on. And then also a painting and sanding respirator can offer a little bit more protection than an N95. They do seal up a lot better and many times they're rated uh, for more contaminants, but neither one of those offer eye protection. And if you're in a situation where you're dealing with like chemical contaminants specifically, then you probably want to have some eye protection. And that's where gas masks have a big advantage. The next piece of survival gear that you hope you never have to use is a Geiger counter or a dosimeter. This is a Geiger counter that I picked up recently and it's designed to pick up radiation in real time and show you how much you're being exposed to. If you want something that can show you cumulative exposure, how much total radiation you've received within a certain time frame, then you want a dosimeter. And those are available in digital form like this, but they're also available in other things like badges or cards. A lot of folks in the medical profession use those, especially if they work kind of with nuclear medicine and things like that. But you can pick up these cards that'll show you how much cumulative exposure you've had and that might be good just to keep in like wallets or purses, just in case something happens, you can tell how much exposure you or a loved one has experienced. So having that just for every person and then maybe one Geiger counter per family could be useful. And a lot of y'all are probably thinking, why? Well, for one, if you live near a nuclear facility, accidents are rare, but they do happen. But also with all the craziness going on in the world, I think this is something that it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. And it's also kind of fun to go up to smoke alarms and hold it right up next to it and hear it start chirping because a lot of smoke alarms do have a little bit of radioactive, I think it's called americium, inside of them. So that's kind of a fun experiment to do. Now, some more um, fun uses of a Geiger counter would be if you're an antique collector. There's a lot of old glassware like dishes, most notably by the company Fiesta, 
that had uranium in it, like I think in the 50s and 60s. And there's some other antique glassware out there as well, which has uranium in it. So antique collectors, they'll use something like this while they're looking at stuff to make sure it's legit. But if you have a Geiger counter, you wanna make sure that it actually works if you need it. So that brings me to my next piece of survival gear, which you hope you never have to use, which is a Faraday cage. And those are designed to protect electronics from electromagnetic fields. That can happen either because of a natural phenomenon or it could happen as a result of a high altitude nuclear detonation which causes an EMP. That would probably be one of the first things to happen if there were to be some sort of nuclear conflict. So if you have a Geiger counter, you want to make sure that that's protected so that when fallout does come, you would be able to tell how bad it is. And Faraday cages come in many different shapes and sizes. You can make them from like metal boxes or trash cans like these, but you can also get smaller Faraday bags like this one. This would be very good for protecting something like that Geiger counter or other small electronics. And they make bigger ones for laptops. They even make some even larger bags which can hold things like solar power stations if you have those and you want to protect them. But one very practical use for something like this is that if you have a vehicle with either passive entry or keyless ignition, then thieves, they can use a signal booster to kind of hijack that signal from your key fob and steal your vehicle. So if you have that, you can order one of these bags and prevent that from happening. And this actually does work. It's by Mission Darkness. And I put my key fob inside of it. And as you can tell, I cannot get in my truck. But when I take that key fob out of the bag, it opens just like normal. And before we move on to our last piece of survival gear, I'd like to go ahead and thank Premier Body Armor once again for sending us the stuff that we looked at earlier on and for sponsoring this video. But the last piece of survival gear that we're going to talk about today is the Heine Hydrant. And as you can tell, it's just a garden sprayer, but it has been repurposed into a post-apocalyptic bidet that you can use to clean your behind if there's no toilet paper. And I covered that in my recent video, Ways to Wipe Your Bum When There's No Toilet Paper, how creative that title is, and you can find that by clicking here. It's a very fun video, lots of poop jokes. Thank y'all for stopping by. Y'all have a good one.